I first um, I got into entertainment working in video games, and how that happened was I actually I went to university when I was about eighteen, and I had absolutely no money. I was starving, hungry, and need, basically needed to do something. So the only thing I could do really was play games, play video games. So I thought to myself, I might as well try and make some money out of that. So I actually started testing video games for a company called Psygnosis back in England, where I'm from. And I was working there for about three months. I got to know one of the directors, and I offered to make a game for them for free. And because I just wanted the opportunity to make a game, because I just love games so much. And they were very gracious to give me the opportunity. And in the end, I actually ended up getting paid for it. And from there, I actually um, released the game. And then I set up my own company in England to make video games. And I was doing that in England for about 10 years. And after that, I got a call from the publisher that I was making games for, saying, you know what, Dave? We've got this uh, video game called Call of Duty. Now, this is 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, Call of Duty was hardly anybody had even heard of it. I hadn't heard of it when I got the call, and I worked in video games. So that's kind of how small it was back then. And they said, we've got this game. You know, We need some help with it. We'd really like some of your guys to come to America and help us make this game. So I always had this sort of secret desire to go to America, and especially uh, California. And lo and behold, uh, Activision's headquarters is in Santa Monica. So I was delighted to get the opportunity. We, I got on a plane with my brother. And that was 10 years ago. And I helped them out with that video game. They were pleased with what I did and offered me the opportunity to run the team making Call of Duty games. So I then produced three of the games. And then I we started the project Call of Duty Black Ops, and I was asked if I would um, write and direct it. So an amazing opportunity. I took it, and since then, um, Black Ops will be very fortunate that it did really, really well. It's, it is still, to, to this day, the best-selling video game of all time. And it was just it was an honor to work on that. And then after that, I worked on the sequel, writing and directing that to Call of Duty Black Ops 2. So that's kind of how it all started. I mean, I've been fascinated with just with war generally for years, and particularly now having worked on Call of Duty, I've had very extensive experience and learning on World War II and also Vietnam, which were featured, I mean, World War II was heavily featured in Call of Duty games, Vietnam, particularly in, uh, in Call of Duty Black Ops. So I've always been fascinated by it, and the more I've learned about it, the more fascinated I get. And I think war is changing, it really is. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the recent wars, and you look at combat deaths, you know, World War II was about 300,000 US combat deaths. So World War II in, you know, ended in 45. You got Vietnam had 50,000 combat deaths. I mean, it's obviously still an extremely tragic and loss of life, but six times less than World War II. You know, you look at the combined total of Iraq and Afghanistan wars. You know, I believe it's it's around the five, six thousand combat deaths um, amount, which again is you know ten times less than Vietnam. So you can see as war is is going forwards, its deaths are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And the, the reason for this is that war is changing. It's no longer just you know rows and rows of guys you know either side of a battlefield just fighting each other. It's it's dramatically different. What's what's really engaging me intellectually is what is the next one of those that's going to happen? I don't think the next <clears throat> the next war that we need to be worried about is you know another World War II coming where there's going to be you know millions of people fighting on battlefields. I just don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be an unexpected nature kind of war probably based around new technologies. You know, you look at all the different types of technologies that are around right now. Drones alone is a, a just, I can't even get my head around how staggering the potential is for drones to be either misused or abused. And I think the, this country and, and the world needs to be ready for that. But that's just, drones are just, you know, one element. I mean, there's so many different things that you can look at. And that's what I'm interested in. Is there a way to sort of generalize 
these potential threats to the country and try and figure out potential solutions to that or even ways to predict the kind of things that can happen before they do and before it's too late. Like I wrote the story for Call of Duty Black Ops 2 with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, who obviously you know has a vast amount of experience in not just not just war. You know he's been there on the field himself, and you know he's obviously got a great deal of experience on the political side. So I have experience from working with people like him. I've spent many many hours with people, soldiers who are on the ground and they tell you the kind of experiences that they go through and they also tell you which is most interesting to me about ways that things can potentially improve in terms of how wars are fought and that's what I that's what I am really engaged in now the, particularly for the topic of you know what are the what are the next unknown future wars in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 the storyline was actually based around a essentially a terrorist who managed to gain control of the entire US drone fleet and actually used the, the US's drones against itself, essentially. So it's, you know, sort of the David and Goliath thing where you can defeat your enemy by using his strength and power against itself. And I see more of that coming, and you can see it, you know, even you know, recently in recently in the last couple of years where you know, the information that the country has. You know, you, you get somebody like Edward Snowden, just one guy, one contractor, who can almost rewrite history by just doing one certain thing. And again, you know, who would have predicted the consequences of that even like three or four years ago? You know, what happened there was just, just an absolutely unexpected and, you know, globally, not just, not just significant to this country, but actually significant globally. Let me tell you, I, um, when I was first contacted by um, the Atlantic Council, I was, I was staggered by the outside-the-box thinking that was coming through. Even the nature of just the initial contact, I was so impressed by. You have this think tank in Washington, you know, people have, on the outside of Washington have all kinds of different perceptions about what goes on. But somebody from, you know, the Atlantic Council contacted me and said, you know, you've made this video game. We've seen, you know, a lot of the things in it, and we're really interested that some of the ideas in this could help us predict future threats. Now, let me tell you. When we're making these video games, what's most valuable to me as a, as a director, you know, running the team, is people with outside-the-box ideas. You know, lots of people have lots of different ideas, but sometimes you'll see something where it will be, wow, I never thought of coming it from that angle before. And for somebody in Washington to take the initiative to contact a video game developer who might have ideas to contribute to, you know, ultimately the safety of the nation, to me, it was mind blowing, and I give you know great credit to the Atlantic Council for taking that leap of initiative to help because I really believe that artists can help with this problem. I mean, if you look at 9/11, for example, I mean it's a scene out of a movie. It is literally a scene out of a movie. There was there was one called Turbulence years ago where there was a plane flying into a skyscraper, and you know. If you'd have even tried to make a movie about 9/11 before it happened, I think people even in our own industry would be like, "No, no, no, that's a bit too far-fetched. You know, that could never happen." Four simultaneous strikes against, you know, the command and control structure of the country. You know, the finance capital, the, you know, legislation, the military, the Pentagon. It's like that would never happen, and it did. And the reason it did is because sometimes people think of these outside-the-box ideas like artists do. And I think using artists to help create solutions to try and overcome some of these problems is, is a stroke of genius in terms of potential outside-the-box thinking. So the fact that the Atlantic Council is thinking along those lines, I'm on board.